Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. I bet you Milton can fit a six foot pole in a five foot shed. A pool? No, 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 a pole. You in on this? All right, how much? A dollar. Oh, you're on. Wait, feet? You call yourself a scientist. Fine, make it a six meter pole in a five meter shed. Doesn't matter, still works. All Milton has to do is move at about 55% the speed of light. That's about 369 million miles per hour. Fast, fast. Remember from previous videos that time passes more slowly the faster you move. You don't notice it because even your brain is working slower, but it's definitely happening. Well, time isn't the only thing that's different. If the speed of light is always the same, then pretty much everything else has to change the closer you get to the speed of light. Most of these things change by the same factor, what we call the gamma factor, which in this case needs to be 1.2. Mass is 1.2 times bigger, time is 1.2 times slower, and even length is 1.2 times smaller. This happens at a little over 55% the speed of light. Let's do this, Milton. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Why? Because as far as Milton is concerned, it's the shed that's moving. So wouldn't he see that shrink? Yeah, sure, see? So it's not actually in the shed, right? It only looks like it's in the shed? Nope, it's totally in the shed. So you're saying if I closed both doors, it would be completely inside? Completely. Well, I mean, until the pole or the shed explode. Just to keep things simple, we'll close the back door in advance. Then we'll shut the front door the moment the pole hits the back door. <laughs> So what did Milton see? This. <laughs> to really understand this, we need a space-time diagram. One axis for the direction he's moving and one for the passage of time. From our point of view, the pole moves and the shed doesn't, so the pole fits perfectly in the shed. From Milton's point of view, the shed moves and the pole doesn't. So when the back of the shed hits the front of the pole, the pole doesn't fit. But look, the moment you close the front door isn't the same anymore. It's a short time later. Yes, it's only about 11 nanoseconds later, but there's still time. Assuming the back door can survive the initial impact and keeps going, it has to make the front of the pole move with it. But the back of the pole stays still because it doesn't know anything about the front of the pole. During those 11 nanoseconds, the shed compresses the pole just enough so it fits before the door closes. That's crazy! Absolutely crazy, but totally true. What if I left the doors open and set up a circuit? What kind of circuit? Let's say the shed has a power source with the negative end at one door and the positive end at the other door. The metal pole has a light bulb that completes the circuit as it passes through, but only if the pole perfectly fits in the shed. There can't be light for one person, but not the other person, right? Right, but you're assuming circuit circuits turn on instantly. Nothing in this universe happens instantly. It might seem to us like electronics respond instantly, but faster than you can see is not the same as instant. The fastest the energy can go from the power source to the light bulb is the speed of light, because that's the universal speed limit. The circuit must be completed for at least 33 nanoseconds. That means the contacts have to be over five and a half meters long, which is longer than the shed. So the light bulb pole looks more like this. I give up, here's your dollar. Hey! Pick it up yourself, I'm done. How would you fit the hole in the barn? Let us know in the comments. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.